So next up, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency Chief says Americans gravitating towards digital currencies urges banks to embrace innovation. Good luck with that, Brian. So this is Brian Brooks. He's the acting comptroller of currency at the U.S. Office of uh, OCC. Says America must adopt digital currency payment rails if the country hopes to compete with global payment rails in the future. He insists changing consumer needs must be prioritized over the interests of powerful banks that may be against the rise of cryptocurrencies. I was talking to a friend of mine, Jaime, today, and he said, you know what, I wish I was back in the 70s. He said the 70s were awesome. You, didn't, you, you weren't tethered to this phone. People couldn't find you. People couldn't track you as, as, as easily. And it was just awesome. And then you could actually you know, interact with people instead of interacting with all this, this technology. And I said, you know what, that's true. That, is, that would be fantastic. I go, everything has just, you know, a leap in advancement uh, as far as like 2020. I said, but you know what has not done that? Every bank that's out there, they are still stuck in the 70s. And he has to, I, I gotta tell you, I gotta agree. It's amazing how I can send an email to somebody, a friend in India, and it gets there within seconds, but it takes me three or four days to transfer money. Unbelievable. Not only that, sometimes a wire transfer fee is just ridiculous. Although I gotta tell you, Ethereum fees are getting out of control. But moving on, speaking in an interview, the former chief legal officer at Coinbase Global said it is a fact that 50 million Americans own digital currency, and we can't ignore that. I didn't know it was that much. That's pretty amazing. So if you're looking at uh, American population, you're looking at around 330, 350 million, somewhere around there. So 50 million, not too shabby. Moving on to states, consumers of financial products want fast and error-free services. And this means the United States needs to get to a place where payments can be transmitted virtually instantaneously and where errors can be eliminated. I got to tell you in 2020, I don't see why we're not there yet. Under Brooks' leadership, the OCC has already issued a banking license to a fintech company called Vero Money. I had no idea who these people were, so I took a look real quick. I'm going to actually get a bank account with these guys. They sound pretty awesome. Vero is an American mobile-only Neo Bank based in San Francisco. Shocker. Uh, the company provides financial services through its mobile app and currently has 1 million customers. I wonder what they're... Hey, look. 1.21 uh, uh, interest rate. Or up to 2.8. That's pretty good, actually. I mean, for, for a bank. Free debit card, easy tools, save automatically. Huh, might check them out. Right now, I've got Revolut. I'm pretty happy with them. Uh, they're in, uh, mobile only so far as well. So not too bad. Anyhow, on top of that, uh, he was Brian was also the one that uh, gave the green light for banks to start offering crypto custody services, uh, which we know is not going to happen anytime soon because the banks move as slow as snails. What are you going to do? Brooks still thinks banking systems are outdated, and I agree, and not suitable for today's changing environment. I also agree. And then he starts talking about uh, when the lockdown started and the stimulus check payments and everything else. And it was an eye-opener for uh, not just him, but everybody in the government. Like, wow, these banks suck. So they know exactly what we knew, uh, but they just had to figure it out the hard way. So I'm going to let you hear it from the horse's mouth. This was an actual interview. Uh, this was on uh, CNN. And uh, this was the part where... The host just pretty much asked, asked Brian, like, you know, what's your plans? What's your vision? What's going on here? It's pretty interesting. Take a listen. Sort of have a 21st century view of what the banking sector should look like. And uh, I said it's raising a few eyebrows. It's raising a few more. Give me a sense of what your vision is. Well, Julia, thanks for so much for having me. And these are really important questions to ask in a time like this. You know, this is a time when Americans are depending on their banking system more than they ever have before. When we made a decision collectively in this country to shut down the economy very broadly back in March, we depended on the banks to deliver benefit payments in the form of paycheck protection uh, program uh, loans and checks sent from the Treasury Department. And the problem is we were sending those across 19th century banking rails. Many people said that it took days or sometimes weeks to receive their payments. And my vision is that we need to get to a place in this country where payments can be transmitted virtually instantaneously, where errors can be eliminated. And it turns out technology exists today that can help us do that. So we need to get there, I think, sooner rather than later. That's the answer you want to hear. However, don't get too excited because with every positive, there's a negative. And I'll get to that in a second. So moving down... Brian also elaborated and said banks are sort of the last bastion of the amalgamated comprehensive supermarket of financial services. He anticipates continuing resistance by banks to new payment rails. And of course, of course they're going to be resistant because they had a great run and they don't have to change anything. But I got to tell you, that's fine. They can do whatever they want to. They can be super resistant. It doesn't matter. Blockbuster, the cab companies, even Woolworths, they refuse innovation too. And look where they're at. So I'm just waiting for the next evolution. And later on, uh, the host asked him about like, well, how are you actually in 
looked upon in the banking sector. And he says, this is what he says. He goes, I'm not a crypto bull or a bear, but I recognize reality. A lot of people have this stuff, crypto, and they have it for good reasons. First of all, I think he's full of it. I think he is a crypto bull because he knows that there are a lot of great advantages to using cryptocurrency and digital assets to speed up exactly what people want. And I think that is the next evolution. He just can't come out and say like, hey, you know, I'm a super bull. He can't say that. And he goes on to say, we need to make sure it's a success to them in the safe, in the same safe and sound way they get a check into their account. Our role is to innovate as people change the way they consume financial services. There's a part in here, and I'm going to link uh, this little uh, this tweet and this interview so you can listen to it. I'm not going to go over it, but basically what he says in the end is he's like, look, we want to do innovation. However, what we also want to do is make sure that that my office and certain watchdogs can oversee everything that's going on to make sure that everything is safe and sound. So you got to understand, if you want safety, Sometimes you got to give up some freedoms. And with that, there's a lot of people that are like, nope, don't want to do that. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let's move on.